My name is Tyler, I'm with Solar Pool Supply, and I'm here to show you how to build a ground rack structure in your yard. So first you can see, I have strung out where my rack is going to eventually be. Right now I just have the string lines pretty much level, but we will get into that later. Right now we are building a rack for four by eight foot panels with the inch and a half header for the swim easy panels. Essentially your inside diameter where your posts would like to be, either the four by four with wood or with fence posts, metal fence posts, um, should be about four feet in the middle of the rack for the structure from the ground and you will be extending it two feet on the top portion and two feet on the bottom portion. This right here will be our middle mark and I'm using a torpedo level just because it's easy and convenient and it has a magnetic side, so it helps a lot with the metal fence posts. So right there, we'll level there, and then we need to make sure that we'll level up and down to ensure that our post hole will be as straight up and down as possible. And then once you have that, go ahead and use, you can use spray paint. I'm using markdown paint, which is really easy. Just spray straight down, and you have your mark. And then I will go ahead and do the rest of all the holes the exact same way. So once you have done all your measuring, all the post hole marks and everything else up until this point, now you're ready to dig. I have already done this hole to show you. Typically for a smaller ground rack on a hill, you only need to go about a foot and a half, maybe two feet deep, depending on how soft or hard the dirt is. For this hole in particular, I went 18 inches deep and the way you measure how much you need to go is you use the front part of the hole. Since we're on a hill going this way, the front part here would be 18 inches from ground level down into the hole. And you will repeat that for every hole. So after you've gotten all the concrete dry and good to go, the next step is leveling the posts and cutting them. So what you would do is just use the same string line that you used to mark out the holes and to place the posts. You would use the string and level it, try to find level. Once you found level, easiest way to do it is just by throwing in a self-tapping screw. That way you can hold it up or down. When you have that done and if your string line is all level, you're able to make marks. Now the outside posts, you already have a hole, so that's your mark, and just use a Sharpie and just draw a line right on the other posts. That way you know exactly what level is. So when you have your posts cut, you're able to use the vertical supports, which is the main structural support of your rack. These will run vertically up and down. All the other pieces will run horizontally to support the panel. So I have a mark lined up where two feet is and I'm lining it up to the back side of this post. That way I know I have the two feet here. And since you already have the post cut, you wanna make sure that the center lines up exactly with this piece of metal. That way you know for sure that when you put the other horizontal supports for the panels, you're able to avoid any kind of damage to your panels by rubbing against this. And the easiest way is just to use a self-tapping screw first before you bolt it in. I always recommend using a bolt because it is a lot more secure. Then you do the same thing on the bottom.
and now you have your first vertical support and this is what we're going to make sure that this rack will be square off of. Now, once you have done that, use your speed square and line up to the string to find where square is. So square for us is right here. So I will make a mark on this vertical support. That way I know exactly where it should be. And then you take your level. Most choose to use a line level. I like to use a torpedo level to find out where level actually is. For us, it's right there. And then make sure, always double check to make sure that you are still square. Now that you have your top header all squared up and ready to go, the next step is to do the bottom header. So this is where the bottom of your panel is going to be sitting. We have run a string line from the top all the way to the bottom. And now we're going to use the speed square again to make sure that this is still square. So right there is square and I'll be running a screw straight down and in. That way it holds it in place until I have time to be able to put in a nut and bolt. Once you have done the top and bottom supports for your panel and you have it all squared up, the next step is to mark where you are going to put the horizontal supports to support the body of the panel. So now after you had your set string to square everything off, now you use that string just like we used for the vertical supports and it's going to give us a guide as to where we start with the horizontal supports for the bodies of the panel. So once you have the full rack built, what you can do is use what's called a solid substrate. Right here, we're using a corrugated sheet metal. I believe it is a 29 gauge corrugated sheet metal from Home Depot. And I'll be showing you how to line it up to make sure that you stay square all the way through. So you're gonna be using the same string line that you had to be able to run all your horizontal supports down. You're gonna use that as your line for the very edge of your solid substrate to make sure that you are completely square throughout the entire rack. And right here is just an in-between of the two sections. Just overlap one peak to valley. That way you have a secure location for a screw, a bolt, and a nut. So when you finally have your solid substrate on your rack, you can now start adding your panels to it to start your solar system. The easiest way to get these panels flat, just like I have them now, is to unroll them after shipping and lay them out in the sun for about an hour and they will completely flatten out to make it a lot easier for installation. You will notice on one side of these panels, on one of the top headers or bottom headers, there will be a sticker, the manufacturer's sticker. That needs to be installed facing down. That way the sticker is still intact years and years later if there's ever an issue with warranty or the panel itself. So when you're ready to finally install the panels, you will need to mount them using the header brackets that are included in your DIY kit. So these are the header brackets. They kind of look like little L's with the two holes. All of this is explained 
in the instruction manual. So first you will drill out a hole with the header bracket. That way you can see exactly where it's gonna be. After you've drilled the hole, you will insert a lag bolt and you will attach it with a bolt nut. That way it's a secure, strong hold and you know the panel will not be going anywhere. All right, so once you have all your panels all mounted to your ground rack, you will now need to install the wind load strap and the butterfly strap bracket. These are essential to the Swim Easy panels because there is a top header bracket for these panels, but not a bottom. So you do not want to create essentially a wind sail if there's any kind of good wind that comes through here. The reason why the wind load strap is necessary is because with the Swim Easy panel, you do not want to mount the bottom header with a bracket. The reason why is the panel needs to expand and contract with the heat and the cold, so you cannot have a top and bottom mounting header bracket completely fixed because you will damage the panel. So now once you have all the panels mounted and your wind load strap done, the panels themselves are completely installed. The next step is to start your plumbing. For our installation here, I am going to be feeding into the panels at this bottom left-hand corner, and my return from solar is gonna be at the top right-hand corner. This is done that way every single tube of each panel gets completely filled with water. That way all the panels get heated evenly, and there's no short cycling that's gonna be happening. And then on the opposite corners from my feed and return line, I'm going to need a end cap and one vacuum relief valve. For this instance, our end cap will be at the bottom right hand side, so opposite side of the feed line. And our vacuum relief valve will be at the top left, which is the opposite side of the return line. The reason why you want to have your vacuum relief valve towards the top of the system is because when the system completely shuts off and there's no more pressure from the water, that vacuum relief valve allows air to get sucked back into the system so the panels are not under constant pressure and it helps take all the water from the panels every day and put it back into your pool. That way it helps with winterization and freeze protection. All right, so now I'm gonna be installing the two-way isolation valve. For the solar. I am installing the two-way valve right here off of the return line for solar. That way if you ever needed to isolate the solar, whether it be for a leak, you need to do a repair on the ground rack, if you needed to do some gardening over here and you wanted to you know just make sure everything is okay, or if your area gets really cold at night or during the winter time, this is exactly how you would isolate the system. Here's a little plumbing trick on how to connect a pipe from the rack, which is on an angle, into a trench like we're doing here that obviously is flat. So here I have, right off of my two-way valve, I have a 90 and I use my level to make sure that this part, just like that, is 100% level left and right of me. From there, you have a piece of pipe coming straight from the ground which is connected to a longer pipe, which is pointed that direction from me. And you're just gonna use a simple 90 degree elbow to connect from the rack into the ground. And a little tip for when you do glue joints. So what I do is I hold both of the fittings together for about five to 10 seconds to make sure that it does not wanna separate after I let go.
All right, so now I have the feed and return lines done going into the plumbing into the ground. That way we have an underground pipe run. That way there's no trip hazards or anything else. The pipe inside the trench does not have to be insulated. You absolutely can, but it is completely fine to leave it bare. Now the return line I have is coming out of the top right of this system and I have the feed line at the bottom left of this system. The water flows from the bottom into the panels all the way up, it heats as it rises, and it returns out the opposite end. And that's where all the heat from the panels are gonna come back into your pool. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to properly winterize your system. What we're gonna do, number one, is ensure that our pool pump is off. And number two, if your pool is above ground or at the same height or level as the panels, you want to make sure your valves are shut. That way no water can go from your pool back to the panels. And then once you have finally got all your valves turned so no water can get to your panels, you now are able to completely drain your system of water. That way it ensures the panels are safe from any type of freeze damage. So what we're gonna do here is all I'm gonna do is remove this end cap to completely drain all the panels of water. So you just loosen the hose clamp enough to move it over. And then using your hand tool, you're just gonna help pry the end cap off. Now be careful, there's gonna be a lot of water shooting out. And if your panels have been sitting in the hot sun all day with water in it, it's gonna be extremely hot water. So once the water is finally all stopped coming out of your panels, now you can just replace the vacuum and tighten the hose clamp back and make sure when you are done isolating the system, which means drain and everything for winterization, make sure that you keep the valves off going to your solar to ensure no water will try to sneak back into your panels when it's 40 degrees or below. And that's exactly how you winterize your pool system. Simple as that. Now that you have your beautiful solar pool heating rack built, have all your panels mounted, have all your plumbing done, now it's time to go enjoy your pool. If you have any questions about your solar pool heating needs, please feel free to give us a call or visit us at www.solarpoolsupply.com.